What's up guys, today we are reviewing the Lezix Sycon 250mm Gear, aka the Beast. But, this will be a style of knife review like you've never seen before on my channel. You won't see my smug face talking to you for a single second. No background music to the knife demo, just pure ASMR. You can expect voiceover organically captured while I was cutting a variety of ingredients. Once you've watched the video, let me know in the comment section below if you like this style of knife review. View. As usual, you can expect me to push this knife outside its boundaries, not only for entertainment, but for educational purposes, to try and recognize where it shines and where it doesn't, but also where it may surprise you. When it doesn't shine, figuring out why, or at least trying to figure out where it struggles, will be super important. As usual, details on the knife in the video description below, as well as a link to Lesdex Icon's webpage and Instagram. Let's dive in. Now, often people seem to wonder about his bolsters. Are they comfortable to handle? I can tell you not only are they comfortable to handle, but in the pinch grip, it's like it isn't even there. In its fluted fashion, it comfortably follows the opening of my hand. In this particular case, with the blade being so long and tall at the heel, the bolster is also a welcome addition in ensuring this knife doesn't end up being too front heavy. Profile is lovely, western of course, aggressive sharp tip with a flat grind geometry in a gorgeous etched package. Blade is a little sticky as you'll see, handle all things considered is relatively light with the majority of the weight to balance the knife coming from the bolster and the length of the handle as opposed to the density of the wood in the handle. So far I really like this knife the way I'd best describe it is um, I think it has a beautiful profile. I really like the edge geometry, but if I had to describe the way it feels, it has a great balance. It's definitely a hefty blade. What I really, really like is the angularity of the knife. I know that sounds a little nerdy, but it's true. The angularity of the knife angles are very sharp, but at the same time, there's these subtle contrasts that aren't quite angular. Like the bolster is incredibly well done. I like how smooth it is with the handle. Typically, you'd feel like you might feel a recess because of the two different material types. And there's just subtleties of the beautifully hand-worked integral bolster, which is fantastic. And you can't really tell the details until you look closely at it. And then to kind of offset that angularity, you then have this nickel cladding line, which is nothing but angular. It's very sinusoidal instead. So super cool knife, uh, blending tradition and super modern. I think that's probably a good way to describe the Lesdex approach. It's really a great blend of traditional crafts and modern technology. Very angular, very cool, loving it. Now, as the weeks elapse with this knife, I realized that what I like most about the blade is its angularity. Lesdex isn't throwing facets left and right for no reason. The Gyoto profile is very aggressive and I love it. The handle shape flares slightly, also love it. He marries really well subtle contrasts with high visual contrasts. The angular details in the integral bolster are only really visible upon close inspection. In contrast, the nickel cladding is sinusoidal and in your face. Bolster to handle transition is golden. Rarely or ever have I seen a metal to wood transition be so smooth. I love the weight of the knife in hand which for a big boy under 200 grams is very impressive. Not for the faint of heart, especially at this size, but the weight feels good, not in a cumbersome way. Even when cutting items that don't require a razor sharp edge, I can hear the scalpel edge seen through ingredients. Sharpest out of box edge I've ever used of non-Japanese makers. Alright, that was a bit of a struggle bust there. I didn't think it was going to go through the cabbage well because it's very dense, but a little bit of a struggle. Not so much wedging as much as just getting stuck and then even trying to slice this nice and thin. Lovely blade geometry. I do find the edge just a little thick behind the primary bevel. The tapering of the spine is great and contributes to a good feel and hand of the knife. I think if the primary bevel angle was either more acute or secondary bevel thinner, it might be easier to push through certain ingredients. Or I wonder if his S grind model of similar build is potentially the answer to this. Either way, cuts really well. But that was my only point of criticism that it feels slightly thick behind the primary edge.
as you'll see in the video as well, I like to take knives outside their comfort zone, push them beyond their limitations. It really helps me understand the blade geometry, see where it shines, where it doesn't, and sometimes you'd be surprised to figure out that it shines in a way you never thought it did because, well, you decided to push the knife in that direction. The bolster honestly is really comfortable. I know a lot of people ask about that. It feels great in hand. Profile and geometry is fantastic. And the handle balances this rather long blade very well. Best use of the knife so far. That scalpel edge worked really well with this protein, really. It's starting to shine a lot more. As the name implies, Giotto Cow Sword, I had done really well on prosciutto. Now I took down this pork shoulder very, very quickly with ease. Kind of like a hefty sujihiki at 250 millimeters. Again, it lends itself well to this type of protein slicing task. So I'd say, um, though I still think there should be some changes on the edge geometry above the primary bevel. Super sharp apex, maybe a little bit thick behind the edge for fine precision work, but for something like this, fantastic. Great bite with this blade, that's for sure. It has a lot of bite. Nice and easy to clean the pepper. Let's see if it has bite with the skin. <laughs> 